Now, the training that you received for the B-29, was that extensive? Yes. In, in training for pilots, we normally went through about a year's training. In other words, uh, we had a couple months of primary training where we flew PT-17s. It's a biplane made by Steerman. Then we went to a basic training. We flew a BT-13, which we call the vi uh, vibrator, and we got another 60 hours or so. And then during this period of time, all my instructors seemed to want to push me into fighter training because I had a little coordination and one thing or another. But I didn't want to fly alone, so I went into a to multi-engine or twin-engine advanced school at Roswell, New Mexico, and I flew AT-9s and AT-17s and got my wings in June of 1943. Then I stayed at Roswell for another couple months taking B-17 four-engine training, and at this time the B-29 was starting to form up and require uh, bodies to be pilots, navigators, bombardiers, gunners, flight engineers especially, and the ground people. And so I was lucky enough to be selected to go to the B-29 program. One of the first. Right. Mm -hmm. My friends mostly went to Europe to replace pilots either in England or Africa, and many of them, of course, became German prisoners of war. But I had the advantage of getting to stay here in the United States and train in Kansas in the new B-29s. Well, in reviewing some of your many tapes, I learned that there was such a hurry and a demand to get the B-29s overseas and into action that they were manufactured and sent before first testing them. True. Uh, in 1940, the government issued requests for a very heavy bomber because the only things we had were the B-17 and B-24, which were to be used in Europe and against Germany specifically. And they needed a larger plane, and it appeared that Hitler was going to overrun France, and did, you know, and uh, the British evacuated back to England, and they thought, well, he was going to go to South America and Mexico, and we will need a big airplane to defend the United States. And that helped Roosevelt in his request for pilots and planes. Well, I know that these, um, the rush was on to get these planes up and into action, and I, I remember viewing in the tapes that they were just building the factory as they were building the, the airplanes. They were actually working on the construction. They were trying to do everything so quickly, and that no two airplanes were the same initially because they make changes constantly. Uh, how did this, this rush and everything affect the reliability of well, the planes? Well, normally it would have, in the old days, would have taken several years to test this, but President Roosevelt met with the Allied leaders, Chiang Kai-shek and Winston Churchill and Stalin and a half a dozen conferences in 1943, and he made some promises that the United States would bomb the Japanese from the China area because it, by 1943 it appeared that the European war was going along. Now originally the B-29 had been planned to be used against the Germans, but then it was changed to do that. Now the B-29 was the largest airplane used in World War II, and it cost over $2 million for that project. It was exceeded by only one other secret thing, and that was the atomic bomb project, which cost $3 billion in 1940 wartime uh, period of time. Mm -hmm. And so the B-29 had to be designed with new wings, new engines, and what they did was the Wright Corporation took two banks of nine cylinders and put them together and made an 18-cylinder engine with a one drive shaft. Then they the plane was so big they had to build all new propellers, and the first B-29s had only three prop propellers. Mm -hmm. Later on, we had the big four-bladed propellers, and they were like 20 feet high, so they were big, but the plane was big. Mm -hmm. And the, the wingspan uh, was went through a whole series of design problems, and they en enlarged the flaps so that when we had takeoffs and 
all, we, we could get off and we could also slow down enough for landings. Mm -hmm. 